In this video, we're going to create a whoosh sound in Pure Data and Max MSP. In my sound design reel, I use this whoosh sound multiple times. It can really make a movement look more impactful, so it's super useful to know how to make this type of sound. Let's begin by making this whoosh sound with your mouth. Don't be shy. I don't know if the microphone is going to pick it up, but... <sighs> kind of like that. So it sounds like this. <sighs> with the amplitude at... <sighs> increase and then decrease over time. <sighs> <sighs> so this... <sighs> sounds like a filtered noise, right? If you remember from the previous sound design tutorial, I mentioned that sound design involves a lot of sculpting or filtering of the white noise. This tutorial is no different. So from this exercise that we just did, we can safely assume that the whoosh sound can be created by increasing and then decreasing the amplitude of a filtered white noise over time. Now the question is, which center frequency are we going to set for the filter? We could just do a filter sweep manually to find the frequency that we want, but that's a bit inefficient. Let's make that whoosh sound with your mouth again. So your mouth is most likely making an O shape. Not quite an O shape. But more like an O. Okay, keep that in mind and now listen to this noise with a certain frequency increased in amplitude. Now, do you hear the O sound in that? I'll play the notes without any modification and then follow it up with a certain frequency increased in amplitude again right after. Hopefully you heard the oo this time. So that is 250 hertz. Let's go one octave above, which is 500 hertz. It'll sound like an o. Now let's go another octave up, so here's 1000 Hz, which sounds like an ah. <sighs> 2000 Hz will be this nasally behind the nose ant sound. <sighs> and 4000 Hz is shh. And 8000 Hz is S. S. 16K is sparkly. While at it, 125 Hz is that typical bass frequency. And 63 hertz is a frequency that you physically feel more than you hear it. Pretty cool, right? As you can imagine, being able to identify these frequencies this way can come in handy in various situations. For example, live mixing, whether you're the sound engineer or the performer. So during a live performance, if a certain frequency is being a bit too loud, you can think to yourself like, okay, there's a bit too much of an O sound, so let's cut down somewhere around 500 Hz a bit more. In a live performance situation, you cannot do an EQ sweep to pinpoint a certain frequency that you need to cut. So being able to hear and identify these frequencies will allow you to become more efficient at mixing and sound designing. Okay, with all that in mind, let's start sound designing. So we'll filter a white noise with a resonant bandpass filter. 
Because the mouth is making an U shape, I think it will be good to set the cutoff frequency at 250Hz. Let's set the resonance to be pretty high like 50. And because we hear a sizzly high frequency contents that we don't really need for a whoosh sound, let's apply a low pass filter. Now we'll need an object like the line tilde to generate the amplitude envelope. Let's use a function object to draw the envelope. So let's draw something like this. After connecting its outlet to line tilde or mgen tilde for plug data users, you can send a bang and the envelope will be generated. Let's hear it in action. Yeah, it's already sounding like a whoosh sound that we were aiming for. By the way, for plug data's function, we'll need to go to its inspector and set the initialize to yes in order for what's drawn to be saved. It looks like one approach that I took for my sound design reel was to have three separate layers of filtered noise with varying center frequency. So for the psych whoosh sound, I have one filter with 250 as the center frequency. And I also have a filter with 123Hz to add a bit more bass to make it sound fuller and more impactful. And the third filter with 300Hz, which I think I added this to make it sound a bit fuller and layered. I don't remember, so I think I was just following my ears, which is always the key. We may be able to improve the whoosh sound by having a separate envelope for a filter sweep to give a sense of acceleration and deceleration. Or simply just bring in more depth to the sound. Let's give it a try. So we can have the center frequency rise and fall quickly. Yeah, I think it sounds better. And you can of course keep adjusting according to your years. As always, treat these tutorials as something simple to build upon. So if you're designing a whoosh sound for footage where something really heavy is moving, maybe layering a sub-bass sine tone could make it look extra impactful. A subtle pitch sweep of that could be effective too. And adding distortion can make it sound more intense as well. Randomizing the cutoff frequency and amplitude envelopes will allow you to create a bunch of variations of the whoosh sound. So go experiment and have fun. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.